My core focus over the last year has been looking at designated courses and finding ways to improve learning outcomes for emergent bilingual or EL students. Language and schooling have a complex, often problematic relationship in the United States. It is often characterized by a schooling institution, immersing students into a monolingual culture and establishing the dominant language as a standard. So it was for Native American children in boarding schools, students segregated into Mexican schools in the Southwest, and black students in seemingly all school settings that were expected to replace their home language with white middle-class English. Even as recently as 1998 in California, Prop 227 severely limited instruction in students' own language and eroded many bilingual education programs. Of course, most of these schooling practices and policies were in line with the political climate at the time, with language often playing as a disguise for racism and serving as a vehicle for assimilation. The legacy of these schooling practices are still with us today, and even as well-intentioned as educators may be, they still face the challenge of transforming a learning environment that has essentially existed for more than 100 years. The conversation around teaching students whose second language is English has improved since the time of segregation, with different systems and models being put in place to expedite the acquisition of English. At our current school, we use the integrated designated model, where all students, regardless of their language abilities, are in integrated ELD courses, which means that they have at level content learning. Parallel to those classes, they take designated courses, which are designed to help them not only improve their English, but also be successful in their core content classes. Using many of the excellent resources from the ERWC curriculum, I've adjusted our class time to reflect the needs of the students. Uh, roughly half of the time that we spend in designated courses, students are working on language and literacy development units, uh, modified from a lot of ERWC modules, and oftentimes focusing on assignments that uh, we stretch out from their English or science courses. In addition, half of the class is for academic support. Oftentimes what students most need and they most ask for is academic support or just time to work on their assignments. And as has been proven many a time, st students who are still learning English need more time to work on assignments than students that have already developed uh, their English skills past designation status. When looking at inequitable outcomes, there's two particular data points that stand out uh, between general ed students or Engli and English learners or multilingual, bilingual students. Uh, and that is their reading level is a big difference. Students in general ed at our school have a ninth or 10th grade reading level on average, uh, but English learners have a third grade reading level. When it comes to SBAC in particular, we have a 50 per 52% uh, met or exceeded standard when it comes to uh, general education students, but 0% of our emerging bilingual or English learner students meet or exceed the SBAC standard for their grade level. Over the last several years, we have adapted our designated courses from advisory periods to full 100-minute periods. Uh, part of this came from student demand that wanted more support and more time in, uh, in designated courses because they felt it helped them succeed in the regular academic courses. One of our biggest successes was changing the perception of the designated course from quote unquote the dumb class to being a class where students actually want to be in and want more time and more support. Part of this was just asking them what they wanted to read. Uh, part of our program is to make sure that students have access to books that they like. And part of that is having them order their own books. What they chose are things that I probably would not have expected. Uh, the students would order a lot of manga sets, sometimes $100 to $150. But using the Title III funds, we were able to order these books for them. And they have become highly popular. Often students in AP or honors courses asking them, whoa, where'd you get this book? So not only are they able to read and access what they like, but also it brings a level of prestige that did not exist before we transitioned to this designated format. Additionally, many of the assignments that students are asked to do in class are culturally relevant, but ask them to implement authentic reading and writing strategies borrowed from the ERWC curriculum. An assignment from this semester that has been very successful was students having to write an example of a 36 hours article from the New York Times column, but applying it to their hometown. 
students were given the language of travel writing, which is very different than academic writing, but they were able to put their expertise and what they knew and where they came from into a authentic article that even their teachers in ELPD were able to read and comment on. And students were told that they would have this authentic audience. And I've seen, I saw them motivated in a way of producing their work that I had not seen before. The sophomores in my designated course are also part of Monarch Mentors, where they're assigned a mentor that is usually an upperclassman that meets with them once a month to develop these growing relationships and talk about issues that sometimes as teachers we don't fully understand or can connect with them in building these relationships that hopefully keeps them motivated, that helps them navigate the uh, high school environment, especially when some of them are new to this country or are having a hard time adjusting to life as a high schooler. Lastly, we plan at least one college tour a school year for both the sophomores and the juniors in designated courses. The goal is to take them to a college campus where they connect with a student group uh, that is similar in background, sometimes from the same neighborhood, sometimes even from the same schools as these students. Uh, and they explain to them how it is navigating life in a higher ed institution. Uh, this has been some of uh, the most successful moments with these students where they bond, they come together, they create community, and they're able to envision their lives beyond the, the mundane elements of high school and 10th grade and 11th grade, but see what their future can hold and what possibilities uh, are beyond our doors. Ultimately, our main driver, our main motivation is the students themselves. It seems simple, but often just asking these individuals, these young people, what they need, what they want, allows us to adapt our curricula, our practices to best meet their needs and start changing these outcomes that are too predictable into outcomes that hopefully can be predictable in the other direction and be successful and thrive beyond high school and beyond our institution's doors.